So, uh, for our latest, uh, for the for the last um, long sessions, and then afterwards we'll have a break. Uh, Sagi Blonder, CTO and co-founder of Percepto. I guess uh, as most people know about them, uh, they are around for a little while. Um, so Sagi is an autonomous system uh, visionary in data analytics. Uh, pioneer. Sagi heads Perceptos R&D and oversees the company's core innovation in autonomous systems and data capture and analytics. Uh, prior to co-founding Perceptos, <coughs> Sagi was responsible for the architecture and implementation of verification software, environment, algorithm, and optimization at Freescale Semiconductors, uh, a global leader in embedded processing solutions. Uh, Sagi holds a BSc in physics and BSc in electrical engineering, both from the Ben Gurion University, uh, with high honors. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, I know I heard about Percepto a long, long time ago when it was just uh, uh, in Indiegogo, uh, right? Five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. Uh, I was impressed. Uh, I remember we all looked at it together in our uh, Intel uh, innovation team, and uh, we said this is going to be big. So they they, they switch from then, but uh, <laughs> it's still something really cool. So looking forward to hear from that. Right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for meeting this team, uh, for having me. Uh, I'm Sagi, I'm co-founder and CTO of Percepto. If you don't know, Percepto is a developer and deployer of uh, autonomous drone systems, mostly uh, in industrial sites. Okay, not alone, but mostly. Um, you're going to see a few videos of the system, so you have the notion. Um, but uh, today I'm here to uh, talk about uh, the concept of autonomous cycle. Okay, so... Uh, screen here. Um, usually when talking about robots, we're talking about their uh, degree of autonomy, okay, their capability to do stuff without any human guidance or intervention. Uh, the autonomous cycle is uh, another aspect of, of autonomy. Uh, it's the capability of a robot to do its task repeatedly over and over, over a large period of times without any human intervention in between, okay? Um, not every robot has to have uh, an autonomous robot has to have an autonomous cycle. Uh, an example for it is a delivery robot, which can be completely autonomous, as it has to navigate throughout the, the city with and, and, and deal with unexpected things uh, in the real world. Uh, but eventually, uh, in most delivery robots, a human has to load it, and a human has to get delivered with a package, okay? So its purpose is not to have an autonomous cycle. The autonomous cycle is meant to serve uh, 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 the, the back background notion of a, of a robot. A, ro a robot meant to, to do its routine in the background of, of an operational site in our uh, case. Um, In the commercial drone industry, the, the notion of a, a autonomous cycle gets a more uh, precise definition. Uh, we, for a few years now, we have uh, uh, the drone as a service industry rising up and uh, uh, making waves. Uh, in the drone as a service industry, we have uh, a professional drone operator uh, arriving with any kind of drone, something is it's a, a camera drone for uh, events photography, uh, for uh, asset surveying. Sometimes it has a laser scanning capability. Sometimes it's a, a payload delivery drone. Uh, there are specialized drones to enter uh, hazardous areas with uh, uh, poisonous gas or uh, explosive uh, gases. Uh, the drones can maneuver inside. But the notion of a drone as a service is a professional coming with a drone and operating it. The drone can be 
uh, piloted completely manual by, by this professional uh, personnel, it also can be uh, autonomous in, in terms of navigation and, and uh, executing its mission. But eventually, a professional has to come, deploy the drone, operate it, launch it, and pick it up after it. Okay, that's the drone as a service uh, industry. Where your need is perimeter security, uh, routine inspections of your, your sites, uh, safety insurance, your need is different. You need a 24-7 uh, operating drone and the, the, the notion of having a professional drone operating on your site just doesn't make a lot of sense. You need something more. That's where the drone in a box solution comes into place. Um, the box for a drone serves a, a, a simple purpose. Okay, it's the robotic maintainer of the drone between its cycles. So instead of having a human replacing batteries and taking the data on the SD card, you have the box and this is the robot that handles the drone between its missions. Um, just give me a sec. Okay, so um, for that. Um, the drone in a box concept is what enables the, 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 the drone to, to operate in the background. Once you have a box, once you have the, the drone capable of uh, executing several missions or repeatedly doing the single task over and over, over a few days, over a few weeks, over a few months, you can have a robot in the background just serving you. Okay? The drone, the drone is not the, the purpose of its existence, only the, the, the data it delivers, the action it does. So I want to start by, by looking at uh, an autonomous cycle. We all know that the vacuum cleaning robot, uh, in this case the iRobot Roomba, uh, where the goal is simple, uh, uh, clean flow. I like to start with this example because the, the vacuum cleaning robot is a special kind of robot that we, we actually don't want to see it working, okay? We don't want to, 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 to mess with it, we don't want to, up, to launch it, we don't want to clean its bin after it collects all the, we just want to clean for, right? So, um, as, a, as a vacuum cleaning robot, it usually starts with the actual task, okay? It comes out and starts navigating around the house and picking up dirt, right? Um, after it's done, whether it knows it's completed the, 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 the ground floor or it ran out of, out of battery, the interesting part of the autonomous cycle comes into place. It has to return to its base, okay? So it has to find its way back to the base. And then yeah, it has to precisely position itself in the docking station in order to be charged and maybe to get rid of the dirt it collected. Um, so I find it interesting to look at the roadmap of the iRobot Roomba over time. So uh, when it launches, the first version of the Roomba actually had to be manually connected to a charger. I didn't know that before I prepared this presentation. I don't know if you ever saw a model of Roomba that has to be manually connected to a charger. I'm pretty sure it wasn't a popular model. Only five years later, uh, iRobot introduced the self-charging base. Uh, it was equipped with an IR beacon, which uh, uh, got lit when the, the, the robots actually uh, done uh, with the cleaning task or got his battery uh, low. <coughs> and if the Roomba was close enough to the beacon in the same room, so it found its, uh, its docking station and navigated right back to it, and everything was fine. But if it, the, the docking was around the corner or in a different room entirely, it just started aimlessly navigating around the house looking for it clicking, right? So, what happens if the battery was completely drained while it searches for the beacon? You get a Roomba somewhere in your house. When you get back, everybody here knows it, how, how it feels like. To play hide and seek with a Roomba, right? 
Uh, scheduling was also uh, introduced in uh, in this uh, in this model, just uh, you know, uh, allowing us to operate the robot when we're not in the house, which is a nice <coughs> step forward. 2013, uh, um, iRobot replaced the brush rollers uh, uh, with uh, rubber rollers. Okay, what they did was tackling a very significant uh, problem with our products, uh, the cleaning of the brushes. Okay, so again, I'm sure everybody here knows what it feels like to clean hairs off a room with a brush. It's a very tedious and, and annoying task, and you don't want to do that for your robots, right? You want the robot to work for you. Um, Two years later, uh, I will finally introduce SLAM into the Roomba line. Uh, not only achieving greater cleaning efficiency, but now the drone also always knows how to go back to its docking station. Okay, no more hide and seek with the Roomba. Only last year, uh, they introduced the self emptying base, giving the first actual solution to cleaning the bin of the, of the robot. Okay, now instead of having to maintain the robot after every cycle, and sometimes if you have a big house in the middle of the cycle, you can now forget you have a robot cleaning your house for a few days and just have the floor clean. Moving on to Perceptor. Uh, our drone named Sparrow uh, has a different cycle, but the, the, the concept is very, very similar. Uh, as the drone is, a, is an aerial vehicle, it starts with uh, a, a long list of system checks. It has to make sure the vehicle is flight ready, its uh, GPS is, uh, is live and strong before taking off. Once it took off, uh, it navigates autonomously to, to its uh, uh, target or the mission entry point and start its, its actual mission. In most cases, we're talking about data collection and analysis, okay? Um, once it's done, again, return navigation back <coughs> to the base, and that's where the interesting uh, part of the autonomous cycle starts. The spare drone then uh, execute precision landing on the base, then docked, is being docked into the base, being connected to it for uh, charging and data flowing. We're going to look at the last few steps, two steps. Uh, now. So, um, the spur system purpose is to operate in industrial uh, uh, sites, sometimes a very harsh environments in terms of. Uh, Dust, rain, wind, it's a 24-7 drone that is expected to operate always, not only when it's a sunny and a nice day, nice weather. Uh, it should operate in very hot weather, very cold weather, and all of the, the competence and the procedures of it should endure uh, in this, this kind of environment. Um, Talking specifically about precision landing, it's very uh, challenging for these types of vehicles. You want to be able to land on a centimeter accuracy, since you don't want the landing pad to be much larger than the drone because it makes the whole system a lot, of, a lot larger. larger. Uh, and uh, the, the smallest, or well not smallest, but let's moderate wind gust can uh, just blow you away from your target. Okay, so uh, again, this system is meant for 24-7 uh, uh, operation, and if there are wind gusts, there are wind gusts. We have to land in the base, no matter what. Okay, so, um, precision landing can be solved in a lot of ways. Okay, we can use uh, physical tethering, and we can use uh, 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 beacons. Uh, we chose because our own experience, we have the camera and the drone and we have the, the computer vision uh, uh, expertise 
uh, to, to solve it with computer vision. And the common way to solve precision learning with computer vision is an IRB. You place a, a small uh, LED who transmit uh, uh, just uh, you know, uh, IR lights, and you uh, lock onto that. We chose something different. We chose to, to employ a, a visual pattern on the on the base, uh, uh, which we can see in day and in night by illuminating it. Uh, and not only it's more robust, it actually solves a, a very um, very fundamental uh, um, deficiency in the in the in the IR beacon solution because when the drone gets close. To the, to the beacon and a wind gust, a strong wind gust comes, it can blow the, the air beacon out of the drone's view. Okay, so by having a visual, a visual pattern, a larger visual pattern, uh, we, we, we just in, uh, prevented the drone to start over when every wind, unexpected wind gust comes into way. Okay, so if the drone just pushed out of his way and he doesn't see the arrow beacon, usually after a few seconds where it tried to estimate where it was and, and look around. So what it will have to do is rise above to increase its uh, field of view, find the beacon, and then start actually start over. Okay, and we want to prevent that. Um, so our visual pattern does exactly that. It's uh, it, it allows the, the control algorithm of the learning to be more dynamic, less strict, and um, by that we, we achieved a more robust learning and a, and, and a significantly faster learning because the, the control algorithm can be much more aggressive when it's, uh, it's trying to learn because an error does not cost as much as starting over. Okay. Moving on to the docking and uh, charging of the drone, uh, we we chose a wired charging solution. Okay, uh, aiming for uh, in Perceptor, we always aim for simplicity. Uh, we're a great believer in simplicity, and we always choose the software solution over the hardware solution. With software, you can always upgrade, you can always improve without having to send an engineer to upgrade the system, you do it remotely. Uh, and I'm not even talking about the costs of replacing uh, expensive hardware. So we skipped the solution of replacing battery inside the base station. We went for charging, we went for, for wire charging uh, from the same reasons. We wanted simplicity, we wanted to connect, we want faster charging than what then uh, the wireless charging solution, solution uh, provided. And uh, uh, we, didn't, we, we just uh, want the, the, the fastest, the simplest solution uh, to getting the drone back in the air. Um, but it came with its own challenge. We, we need to, to go from centimeter accuracy of the landing to millimeter accuracy of the connector. So we had to find a solution for that. Uh, we chose uh, simple mechanics of moving the drone to a precise place on the landing pad. Uh, and you can see in the, in the, in the image the, uh, the connector just reaching to, to the drone while centering it. Um, but adding that mechanism added a moving part to our system. And that's tough, but we had 3D printing technology to fast prototype, and uh, we did uh, fast cycles of R&D to, to stress test the system, and, and we achieved a 100% working uh, mechanical solution pretty fast. Okay, I remind you, it has to work in rain, in dust, in very sandy environments, but it works. And uh, actually, 3D printing helped us a lot with that. Mm, yeah. Another uh, um, another component in the in the docking is the is a, a <coughs> high speed data connection. Okay, we use uh, uh, in the computer a high speed data connection to offload the data from the drone to the base. 
We do that to, uh, to faster get ready the, the drone to another mission. Okay, uh, when, when the drone does a 20 mission uh, uh, flight, it can accumulate dozens of gigabytes of data. And, uh, and we need to offload it fast from the drone. The drone is LTE connected, so we don't want to burden the data uh, plan of the local LTE provider. So uh, uh, we added a, a high-speed data connection to the dock. It came with its own challenges because it's very sensitive to, to uh, EMI and, and dust and the moist and, uh, but again, same as a fast port tightening, fast R&D cycles, uh, stress testing, and we got it right. Once we've secured our autonomous cycle, uh, it was time for deployment. Perceptor is now deployed in over uh, 10 countries worldwide. Uh, you can see some of the images here of deployed okay. systems. Uh, you see both versions of the base. The more round one is the, the second version. This is the first version. Um, and once we've secured our autonomous cycle, uh, it's all about improving it. Now we've improved the autonomous cycle, we reduce the number of times we have to send a human to maintain it. Um, the, num the most frequent human uh, intervention we need is, is battery replacement. I think it's a very, very common uh, uh, issue for uh, for autonomous robots. Uh, so we use the data collected from our deployed system from different environments, different weather conditions, and uh, we, we employed and are still employing um, um, automated maintenance routine to prolong the battery life cycle. Uh, so we, we've done uh, uh, We've added air conditioning to the battery compartment to have the battery placed in a, in a, in a valid temperatures at all times. We're not charging the, the, the battery for, for full, full capacity for long periods of time. And we're keeping improving and improving and, and prolonging the, the time between human maintenance. That's it. Questions? Yeah. <clears throat> Other than um, charging the, the battery, are there any other maintenance, like placing parts, placing rotors, pressing the camera? And if these uh, maintenance procedures are much parts from one another, so you don't need to automate them, sending somebody once in three years is just reasonable. That's exactly that. Um, I've mentioned. Um, well, the, the name of the of the presentation is problem solved. You know, I don't say the problem solved, but it's not really solved, right? We keep we're keeping improving it. Uh, the, the the first thing I've uh, I've mentioned about improving the, the autonomous cycle is is battery management because it's the most frequent human intervention. Obviously, we need to replace motors, we need to replace rotors, but the 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 frequency of that maintenance is so much large, it's so much longer than than battery replacement that. Uh, our efforts are going towards the battery. How often do you need to replace the battery? Depends on usage. 24 step, 24 hour usage, for example. Every day, all the time. Every few weeks. Two, three, four weeks. Okay. Okay. We'll, do last, we'll do last question, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Last question. There is a static sensor or something. Can you say that the landing will be like 100% short? Or do we get lost if we try to find the box and get our battery for the information? Or if we want to get the right angles? Yeah, there's no, no such thing as 100%, but uh, I'm uh, very pleased to report we are uh, in production in 100%. Okay, we didn't uh, have any occurrences of the precision landing failing on production systems. That just means we, we haven't flown enough. Yeah, it, it will happen, but, but uh, we're, we're uh, keep improving. We're in a race of improving the system to be able to uh, ramp up our, our statistics. And yeah, it's working 
And we, that's not a problem. Thank you very much. Yeah.